Today in the news, we got a next-gen, not-so-next-gen console, GPU drivers for your phone, and an odd desktop. What's up, guys? I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Microsoft. The next-gen Xbox codenamed Project Scarlet is about a year away. Now, if you've been following the rumors and such, you would know that this console's codename used to be Anaconda. With Anaconda, there were also rumors about a second, less powerful console codenamed Lockhart. Back in June, reports of Microsoft scrubbing the codename Lockhart from its internal documents made it seem like this cheaper model was sort of canceled from within. Well, it seems like it's back. A developer has has opened up to Kotaku about the uh, cheaper model, and it seems like an odd choice. In terms of graphical power, the developer compared it to a PS4 Pro. The one difference, which we've heard about a thousand times, is of course the... The SSD. SSDs. SSD and solid-state drive. Are the target performance for that console is 1440p at 60fps for next-gen games. This is compared to 4K60 on Project Scarlet. Also, it's a diskless system, so if you like your physical copies, you won't like this one. So, why did I say this console is an odd choice? Well, if it's comparable to the PS4 Pro in graphics performance, it means it has less compute power than the Xbox One X, which is kinda weird. Add to that the fact that Xbox said Project Scarlet will be four times more powerful than the Xbox One X, and you got a pretty big discrepancy. For developers, this could be a scaling nightmare. At least with the same architecture, we could benefit from better load times. Thanks to the SSD. Moving on to some smartphone news, Qualcomm just announced the next step in smartphone SoCs. For the high-end phones, we got the Snapdragon 865, and for the middle end, we got the 765. The reveal was heavily focused on 5G technology, which is kind of boring, honestly. One thing they mentioned, though, is updates for the uh, new Adreno 650 GPU, and when I mean updates, I mean driver updates similar to what you would see on PC. This would allow your phone to get optimized updates for specific games and maybe even add features without having to wait for the next Android version to come out. You would just have to download it from the Play Store. Smartphone processors are really getting powerful. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if ARM-based consoles made a comeback and actually stayed this time. This Adreno 650 can actually drive QHD plus resolutions at up to 144 Hz, if the game is simple enough, of course. Now, while this GPU driver update feature sounds nice, there are two problems. First, this is a going forward type of thing, meaning older Snapdragon equipped phones will not have that feature. The second thing is that the updates are supposed to come from the phone's manufacturer, so yeah. At least it should be easier thanks to Project Mainline in Android, which allows a more modular uh, approach to updates for drivers and features. Speaking of ARM processors, we got Huawei in the news, and this one is interesting. The company might enter the desktop PC market. Pictured here is what looks like a traditional ATX motherboard with a Kunpeng 920 ARM processor. I mean, it has everything a regular PC motherboard would have. DDR4, M.2, and PCIe slots, a 24-pin connector, and some SATA ports. The processor is also super scalable. It can go all the way up to 64 cores, and while this is clearly a desktop board besides the weirdly offset PCIe slots, there is a dual socket server version. Now, before you tell me that this is useless for consumers because it can't really run x64 Windows apps, well, with the release of the Surface Pro X from Microsoft, which has an ARM processor, it looks like the company is doubling its efforts to find a better solution, although it's probably going to take a few years for it to be acceptable. The Surface Pro X is currently really bad at emulation. Moving on to some Intel news, they just shared some extra details on their Element platform. This time, it's on a NUC and it's modular. In case you forgot, Element is Intel's sort of modular system. The last time we talked about it was about the almost full computer that is in a uh, PCIe device form factor. The NUC modular platform is split into three different products, the compute module, the board, and the chassis. The compute element contains the CPU, obviously, but also the memory, which is soldered on, and all of the wireless goodness. The board has the I.O. and storage, and the chassis is, well, a case. With AMD starting to help OEM making their own mini PCs, Intel's reign on the low-power, super-small PC might come to an end and quite soon. I mean, Zen 2-based mobile CPUs should pop up early next year. 
Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any questions or comments, leave them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. I got frost bites on my big toe. I got frost bitten on my big toe. Oh, yo.